Hey guys, I've got my April favorites for you today. I have <laughs> like so much stuff sitting in front of me. So let's go ahead and get started. As usual, I applied as much of it to my face as possible today so that I could do uh, cutaways or split screens showing you me actually applying these things. I think you guys find that really helpful. So we'll be doing that. And let's start with primer. Um, I you know, love my Chantecaille Ultra Sun Primer. It has an SPF 45. I still use that a lot. I mention it all the time. So I thought maybe let's not mention it again this month. But one primer I have been loving that also has SPF 45 in it as well is the Tom Ford Glow Tone Up Foundation SPF 45 Hydrating Cushion Compact. And the shade that I use for primer is number two, the Pink Glow Tone Up shade. It is very, very sheer and it really just kind of perfects or kind of evens out my complexion because it has just enough pigment in there. And my cushion already kind of feels a little bit dry. I have definitely been using this quite a bit. So I think I need to get a backup of this already, but I love the radiant sheen that it leaves on my skin. I really love the very like subtle, like tone evening it does for my skin. It just makes for a really great primer because I find it moisturizing. I find it does a little bit of that evening. I think it gives my skin like a beautiful radiance. So it really kind of ticks all the boxes for me. The SPF 45 definitely, definitely helps. So I have been loving this, using this a lot, and it is what I have on my face today. And along with that, in terms of foundation, I have been loving the number two buff. So this it's the same deal, but I'll show you anyway. Uh, same kind of cushion idea. And this compared to the other cushion foundation that I just reviewed yesterday, this has a little bit less coverage and it has like a little bit more radiance. So that one is a satin matte and it really kind of leaves your skin very natural looking, very skin-like. This has like just an additional little bit of radiance in there. It just makes my skin look really pearly. I absolutely love it. And so many of you asked me if I had to choose between these two, which one would I pick? And I would pick this one. Because of my personal taste, I just really like lighter coverage foundations. They just work better on my skin. I just feel like I look a little bit more natural. So I've been loving this. Again, it's what I have on my skin today and it has really great longevity. It doesn't oxidize. It's just a really lovely foundation and I really hope they come out with all of the shades here in America. I know they have more. I know they have a lot more. They released a lot more in like Asia and in Europe, I think, but here they only release the six and like three of them are those like tone ups, which I use as primer. So that doesn't have a lot of uh, coverage at all. And then you're only left with three for actual foundation. So it's very odd. I don't know why they're editing these cushion foundations down, why they're editing the shade range down for America. Um, but they are. So hopefully they'll release all of the shades here or at least more. <laughs> I just think it's very odd. And it's always like, this weird gap between shades. Anyway, just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they're doing it. Uh, so that is what I have on my face. Let's move on to concealer and nothing new here, but I have the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Stretchable Concealer. I have it on today. And as this month went on, I was using the Tom Ford Emotion Proof Concealer. I had done uh, a test, a wear test, with that against the Estee Lauder Double Wear Waterproof Concealer because they're basically the same thing. Um, if you guys watch Wayne Goss's video, it's the same, the Tom Ford is the same as the Smashbox Concealer. So while I liked both of those concealers, I didn't like them as much as I like the Armani. So I returned those. I was tempted to return them anyway because of the similarity in formula and how the Tom Ford is uh, priced so much higher than the Estee Lauder and the Smashbox. But when I did the wear test, I thought, well, I like them, you know, I'll use them. but the truth is I just like this more and I've just been reaching for this more. So I return those and I've just been continuing to use this. So this has been a great concealer for me. Um, I have it in the shade number three. I really like it. I love the consistency. I love the coverage. It doesn't sink into my fine lines. It doesn't age me. Um, I think it has a really long wear time and I just think it's really comfortable on the skin. You know, I put it on and I don't feel it at all. It's not a cakey concealer at all. So this has definitely appeared in previous favorites. So I will move on, but this is definitely still a favorite of mine. Okay, so for powder, and I hate bringing this up because this was limited edition and it has sold out. But what Kogendo tells me is that if it was a very popular item that they would like to bring it back. So this is their, oh gosh, everything's in Japanese. This, I can't remember the name. It's like brightening moisture powder or moisturizing brightening powder. 
it has brightening and has moisturizing in there. So this is the powder that comes in this interesting case and it has this like cool swirly design in there. But this is a powder that really isn't powdery at all. There's, first of all, no kick up in the pan. Whenever I use it, like absolutely no kick up. You can see even in the packaging, it's just not a lot of powder floating around and it leaves the most beautiful sheen on my skin. It's what I have on my skin today. And I, I absolutely love it. I am not a fan of setting powder that has a lot of radiance to it. I really like to add highlighter or you know other products or even leave it to my finishing powder. So I was a little bit wary about this powder because it definitely has a little bit of radiance. I wanna say that this powder has the most radiance that I like in a setting powder. It just makes my skin look really, really um, like smooth and and pearly and it's it's just gorgeous I am really really hoping that they bring this back because it is a beautiful powder and it's very unique I don't have anything like this in my collection and I just think that they did such an amazing job with this so I hope that they bring it back if it does I will definitely let you guys know it's special and I really feel like it should be in their regular line Kogendo if you're watching <laughs> I really feel like this should be in your permanent regular line. Okay, for bronzers, I have a lot of bronzers. I guess that's no surprise. We are in that bronzer season, um, but I love the Tom Ford Soleil Glow bronzers. Um, I originally purchased Gold Dust, which is the warmer, a uh, little bit more radiant bronzer. That's this guy right here. And I liked it so much that I went ahead and purchased Terra, which is more neutral, a little bit cooler tone, great for contouring. It has more of just like a regular satin matte finish. It doesn't have any kind of radiance to it, but the formula is really creamy. So it's not a really like dry looking flat matte. It's like a satin matte. So today I use the Terra as a really light contour and I just put it kind of underneath my cheekbones and I just kind of contour the sides of my temples because I have such a round face. I like to kind of just contour on the sides here and you know, a little bit under my jawline. And then I took the gold dust and I just kind of lightly dusted that where I would normally see sun. So just, you know, on my forehead, down my nose, a little bit on my cheeks, a little bit on my chin. So basically like the high points, but those are the areas that are gonna have like the most sun exposure. So that's where I like to add a little bit of bronze, especially in the summertime. So that's what I have kind of lightly dusted all over my face. I really love this bronzer formula. This is definitely my favorite of Tom Ford's so far. It is it is very, very soft. It's very creamy. So there is quite a bit of kick up in the pan, but it just blends beautifully. It looks great on the skin. And I love these two shades, the Gold Dust and the Terra. The Gold Dust, you know, is very similar to past ones, but the Terra seems very different. It seems a lot more like neutral and cool toned where I feel like past ones, um, were just a little bit, had a little bit more of a redder undertone versus the gold dust, which had a little bit more of a warmer kind of like orange undertone. So I like how these two complement each other. Um, so that is the Tom Ford Soleil Glow Bronzer. And then I've been loving this La Mer bronzer. This is part of the Soleil de la Mer collection that they come out with every summer. It's limited edition. It's always a small, really small kind of capsule collection, but they always include a bronzer. And I got last year's bronzer and it ended up being more of a blush. Uh, so when I saw this year's bronzer, which is a bronzer, I was really excited. So um, because I use the Tom Ford bronzer, the only thing I could kind of squeeze onto my face today is this bottom portion. So this like little uh, leafy part here that you could probably see that has like a little bit of like a satin sheen to it. I just added that kind of back here. It's basically like a, a bronzy toned kind of highlighter. It has that much sheen. So I just added it back there. It's really beautiful. It has a nice peachy undertone. This bronzer is really beautiful. And there's basically three sections and this is the most matte. It's kind of like a satin. And then this gets a little bit more radiant. And then this is the most radiant but you can kind of like mix and match. So I'm sorry, I had to put a cough drop in my mouth because my allergies are so bad that I have, anyway, I won't get into detail, but I've been coughing and I've been coughing between like every sentence and it's just taking me forever to film this video. So I'm like, let me just put a cough drop in my mouth. So that's what I have in my mouth. I apologize. I will try not to move it around in my mouth too much. Um, anyway, so we were talking about the La Mer bronzer. Yes, we were talking about the La Mer bronzer. I just love the variety of the shades in here. They're just, they're really beautiful. The powder itself is really, really creamy. Um, it's not quite as powdery as the Tom Ford, so it's not quite as soft, um, but it blends just as beautifully on the skin. It's, it's gorgeous. So I've been loving this bronzer as well. All right, let's get into the face palettes. I have a heck of a lot of face palettes. So 
Charlotte Tilbury, the Glowgasm Face Palette in Lovegasm. So this is the deeper one, which I don't think is meant for my skin tone, but I don't really care. So this is the blush that I have on today. I wanted to use all of this, but I was trying to spread my love amongst all of these things. So I just used this blush today, but I really like all of the um, shades in here. The highlight and the bronzer, maybe a little bit too dark for my skin tone. So I will go for the Lightgasm palette, but I've just been really, really loving this palette for these two products. This Multi Glow Powder and then this Pop Blush. So this is what I have on my cheeks today. I just have it lightly dusted on my cheeks. It is kind of like a deep terracotta shade, which I just love for like the spring summertime. I think the big criticism for these palettes is because they're like that baked gelée um, texture the powders are a little bit difficult to pick up. So I used my Sonia G Cheek Pro brush, which is a very soft um, dyed goat hair brush, and it picked up the blush beautifully. So I just recommend using a brush that has, you know, a little bit more grippy power, natural hair brush, uh, one that's maybe a little bit more stiff that can kind of get through this texture. And then the next two face palettes, you guys can probably guess, this showed up in my Sephora VIB recommendations, but these are the two NARS palettes that came out for the spring summertime, summer lights and hot nights. And I have the hot nights highlighter on today. So that's what I have just pretty much just, you know, on the high points of my cheeks, I brushed it uh, down my forehead and like over my nose a little bit, I think a little bit on my chin. When I first saw these, I was totally gonna pass. I just didn't think they were that special looking, but I am so glad I got them. And not just because of the formula and the quality of them, but the eyeshadows are just really, really beautiful on the eyes. And I wanted to use a different eyeshadow palette today, so I don't have them on the eyes, but I will try and remember to link up here uh, the video to my review of these palettes where I do an eye look with each of them. They're just stunning, and I don't know why they look kind of unexciting in the palette, but when you use them, they kind of come to life. They're just really beautiful, and I, um, made this comment in my review video, but I really like how they mixed up the different kind of tones in here. We have a lot of like uh, warm tones, but then we have this cool tone, this neutral tone, and they all just work really, really well together. And usually when companies come out with like different versions, different varieties, I'll like one more than the other, or one will very clearly be for my skin tone, the other won't. These both work for my skin tone, which is surprising. And I like them equally. Um, if I had to pick, I mean, I, maybe I would pick the Summer Lights, but I really love the Hot Nights. I really love those eyeshadow tones in there. And I actually prefer the highlight and the bronzer in the Hot Nights more than the Summer Lights. So I just love them both. So next up, I have the NARS Orgasm Palette. I really, really love this palette. So. When I first purchased it, I did not realize that it was all cream products and I really like cream cheek products. So I was very, very excited. The only one I don't like in here is this one. It's just, it's really glittery and that's all you can see on your skin, but everything else looks really, really glossy and there isn't a lot of pigment in these products. And I think that was one of the criticisms of these. And it, it's definitely surprising, especially when you see shades like these three, they're fairly dark in the pan and you think that they're gonna be you know, dark on your skin, but they're very sheer. And so I actually used this one today and what I love, I'm trying to find the right angle. Okay, so this is the highlight from the NARS Hot Nights palette. And then right down here is, do you see that shine? That is this right here. It gives kind of like just a glossy, wet kind of shine. And I really like using it as like a topper or like a pop kind of color right here on the apples of my cheeks. Um, I've also like kind of just tapped it all over my blush bronzer area. I've used this one kind of over my bronzer area. This one has a little bit of glitter in it, but not nearly as much as this one. So I can stand this one, um, but I do use it sparingly. But I just use my finger, I tap it on really lightly, and I just really like the effect that it gives my skin. I really like that glossy, wet kind of like sheen that it gives. It's really, really pretty. So I've been enjoying this palette quite a bit. I wanna say I've been using this color and these two colors the most. Okay, eyes. Um, I've already mentioned the Biba palette, I think in my last month's favorite, but I've been using that a lot still, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. The one newer palette that I've been loving, this is the Le Beige, the Natural Eyeshadow Collection. This is the Nine Pan palette. Uh, it's the Indispensable palette. I'm just gonna translate what it is from French, if that's the translation, I don't even know. But it's this wonderful, 
neutral palette. I love the textures of these shadows. I love the shades that are included. I think because of this like cooler toned trio right in the middle there, you add that to any of these other like warmer colors and you just immediately get like a completely different look. So as I guess as basic as this palette looks, you can get like a lot of distinctly different looks from this one palette and I love it. The quality is great. It's what I have on my eyes today. I basically just used this shadow, outer corner, crease area, and then I used this gold shade kind of all over the rest of my lid. I kind of deepened up my outer corner with this darker kind of glimmery shade. It's really beautiful. Again, I did a whole review on this palette. I'll try and remember to link it right up here. The only like super minor criticism I have is of uh, this shade right here. So this is the probably the most metallic shade in the palette. When I first wore this, by the end of the day, I had a little bit of fallout underneath my eyes. It wasn't anything horrible. I didn't feel like I need to like stop and like touch up my makeup. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but it was something that I noticed and I wanted to pass that along to you guys. Been really enjoying this palette. And then the other eye product that I wanted to mention is this Tom Ford Aqua Metal Shadow in Reflex Guilt. I went ahead and purchased the Violet Argente. I just haven't used that one as much as this one. I've had this one a little bit longer. So I have this basically um, on like the center of my lids. That's that gold that you see right there. So pretty. I really, really like these shadows. They set down and they're like 99% transfer proof. I think I sat there and like really rubbed my finger over the swatch and then I could get a little bit of pigment on my finger, but they really do set down nicely. They're like kind of sheer. So I like using them over eyeshadows. And what I will do is instead of putting this directly onto my lid or directly onto powder, because I always feel a little paranoid about it kind of clumping up the powder underneath. What I'll do is I'll just put some of the cream shadow directly onto my Sony G Worker 2 brush. And this is my cream shadow brush of choice. I'll just dab a little bit, like just on the tips of this brush. And then I will just kind of add it to my lid and just kind of work it in and it's great. I don't feel like it disturbs the shadow underneath when I do it that way. Um, I tried it with like my fingertip. I just don't feel like I have small enough fingertips to actually kind of get it where I want, or maybe my eyelids are too small. I don't know. Um, but I don't feel like I'm precise enough with my fingertips, which is why I like to use a brush. It just adds a really nice uh, pop to any eyeshadow look. Um, there's three different shades. And I like that they're metallic shadows, but they're not like crazy. Like there isn't like a duochrome and there aren't like glitters in there. Like it's just a really pretty kind of like metallic pop. Nothing like overly colorful. And then one last eye product. I actually haven't mentioned this probably in a long time and I purchased this probably last year, but this is the um, Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Eye Coal Intense in Solaris. So these are the double-ended eyeliners that they used to come out with with their Soleil summer collections. This year they didn't. So one end is like a deep dark rich brown and then the other end is like this beautiful kind of like metallic coppery bronzy kind of shade. So I pretty much lined all of my eyes with this dark brown, um, but I like using this to do a little bit of accent. So I just put this kind of like on the inner corners of my eyes. This is also great on the waterline if you want like a little pop of color if you maybe don't want something quite as dark. So I've been loving this um, duo and I was a little bit sad when they did not come out with one for this year because I actually really enjoy these. So that is Solaris. Okay, so finally I have some lip stuff and <laughs> Oftentimes I do favorites and people will always comment, well, what about this? Or what about this? I just, I can't mention like every single thing I loved this past month. This video would be like two hours long. So I really try and talk about the things that I not only really love, but that I also used the most. So anyway, I have three lip products here. One is the Tom Ford uh, Lip Color Sheer in Nudist. This appeared in my top five Tuesdays for spring nude lipsticks. It's what I have on my lips today. I just love it. I love a metallic lip. I love um, sheer lip colors. This to me is just perfect for the spring summer. It has a little bit of like peachiness in there. I feel like it brings the bronze out in my skin and I just love it. It's like, it's a Tom Ford lipstick. So it's super comfortable. It feels great on the lips. I mean, it really just feels like you're putting balm on your lips. So that is definitely one that I've been loving. This is another one that I mentioned in my uh, top five spring nude lipsticks, but this is number 11 from Sicily, the Lafito Rouge line. And 
this is just a great nude lip. And I've been reaching for this a lot, you know, like if I just want a basic look, very simple look, I'm not doing anything crazy. This is the lipstick that I've been reaching for. And I like pairing it with the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Cheat. And the formula is fantastic. It's incredibly pigmented. It's one of those one swipe lipsticks. You don't need to go back and forth. It's like whoop all done really comfortable on the lips but it definitely dries down to like a demi matte kind of finish but it's really comfortable and then last but not least uh one of the new rouge coco flashes from chanel i have been reaching for number 54 boy a lot and i think when i called this or maybe i don't know i talked about it in a video some people were a little bit salty that they kind of changed up the color of boy it is a little bit warmer than the previous version of Boy. The previous version of Boy I think was a little bit more mauve. And this is just a little bit more of like a warmer nude. I liked the previous version. I like this version as well, but it is different. And I did want to mention that, but the formula of this is so comfortable. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. The formula of this is so, so comfortable. I find it to be an improvement over the Rouge Coco Shines, which is what these are replacing. I feel like they're more pigmented. They go on more evenly. Beautiful, just beautiful on the lips, perfect for spring, summer. So that is it and just in time because I'm losing my voice now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please let me know what some of your favorites have been down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.